waited for. You are watching After the Whistle. I'm your host, Brian Moore, along with Tom Krigger. Welcome to episode 7.1, Region D. It's time to get your football fix. Let's go straight to the last week's scoreboard. Uh, in Virginia, Graham 52, Galax 0. Sure. Gate City 14, Middlesboro, Kentucky 13. Uh, Graham, with that victory, Tony Palmer won his 100th game. That is, yes, is correct. 100th win for Coach Palmer. Uh, Alta Vista 24, George With 0. Rural Retreat 41, Eastmont 0. Rye Cove 62, Northwood 0. Uh, Chill High 34, J.I. Burton 7. Blaine County, big win against Jenkins, Kentucky 36-12. Lebanon 42, Patrick Henry 20, Holston 48, Narrows 14, Wise Central 28, Marion 13, Riverheads 52, Taswell 21, Virginia High over Battle 35 to 7, and Union over Richlands 53 to nothing. Uh, Abingdon 31, Christiansburg 28, Ridgeview 46, Grundy nothing. Lehigh 28, Thomas Walker 21, Eastside 46, Hurley 12, Twin Springs over Unica, Tennessee 39 to 20, and Homemaker defeats Castlewood 49 to 7. Uh, five games real quick we'll take a look at. Shout out to Blaine County on picking up a big win against Jenkins, uh, Kentucky. Blaine County playing Phelps this week, chance to get another win possibly. Uh, great for that program that's been struggling uh, with numbers lately. Uh, Gate City goes to Kentucky and gets a win, survives the Zebras. Uh, you know what that's always like. always good. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, most people were talking about this going in. It's always a dogfight. You're down two touchdowns when you get off the bus and uh, seemed to be the way going forward, but uh, Gate City was able to overcome it. Lebanon off to a 2-0 start. Uh, and they're playing an opportunity for a 3 0 start this week uh, in a Southwest District matchup. Uh, Coach Norris has got the group uh, doing uh, exceptionally well. Abingdon with a big win against Christiansburg. Uh, and Thomas Walker gave Lee County all they could handle. Uh, it's probably one of the closest uh, games in that rivalry to date. I don't think Thomas Walker has ever beaten the league. Uh, but that's our Power Five games. Uh, a little bit of a recap on them. All right, well, here we are back at episode 7.1. A uh, little bit of a delay in this season due to some scheduling conflicts, but uh, how's your school year going, Coach? Uh, it's going great, considering people left and went to other schools and made my job a whole lot harder. <laughs> I'm sure they did. I've done stuff I ain't done in 20 years of teaching. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, it's same, same for me as well. Yeah. I mean, some adjustments to, to make. Uh, it's one thing to have 190 students at a school and go to one that's got 600. 600. So uh, that was a little bit of an adjustment. But so far, it's been uh, well received. Uh, <clears throat> can't complain uh, too much about it. A little bit of changes in our program. Uh, hopefully, uh, to help expedite things, make it a little bit quicker for everyone at home. Uh, that's watching, but we would also ask that you hit that subscribe button. Uh, help us get over that thousand uh, subscription mark uh, sometime this season. All right, well, after this week over, was over with, we have five players we're going to introduce as our peak performers of the week. And in no particular order, uh, from the Homemaker Tigers, quarterback Peyton Music uh, was 15 to 23, 361 yards passing, three touchdowns, and he had a punt return for a touchdown. Uh, in their win against Castlewood. Uh, up next, quarterback Mike, Mike Reese from Lebanon uh, was 13 of 23, 339 passing yards and five touchdowns and only one interception uh, in the Pioneers' uh, second win of the season. And then I got to see this young man play, uh, uh, Cam Bostick from Union, uh, ran into his dad after the ball game. Uh, 12 of 17, 202 yards passing, uh, uh, he had a touchdown. He also had uh, six carries for 57 yards and one rushing touchdown. Uh, impressive performance by him. I tried to tell <coughs> Union last year if they had put him there, they'd have went a lot further. Well, they they finally, I mean, you're forced <coughs> to put somebody in there and you see that I was right. Well, that's what happens. Thank you, Cam. Make me look good, buddy. That's what happens when they listen to the creed. That's right. Uh, Y'all can't stump the creed. <laughs> 
Uh, next on our list was Luke Holmaker from Abingdon, who had two kick returns for a touchdown uh, and one rushing touchdown. I guarantee you nobody's kicking to him the rest of the year. If they do, uh, they evidently haven't been watching film and don't scout well. And last, we have uh, running back uh, Walker uh, Hillman from Gate City. He had 27 carries and 164 yards rushing and one touchdown uh, for the Blue Devils. So those are our peak performers of the week, uh, representing Honecker High School, Lebanon High School, Union High, Abingdon High, and Gate City High. And this week's peak performer of the week is quarterback Mike Reese from Lebanon, 13 of 23, 339 yards passing, five touchdowns, one interception. Uh, congratulations to quarterback Mike Reese, Lebanon High School. All right, uh, folks, from the moment you step inside the showroom, Ramey Chevrolet uh, is ready to put you behind the wheel of the right new uh, or pre-owned vehicle, but it doesn't end there. Not only does Ramey's offer a wide variety of new and pre-owned vehicles, uh, they also offer a wide range of uh, extended services, whether it be the Ramey's Service and Repair Center or the Certified Parts Department, Ramey's Chevrolet in Richlands aims to please. So stop by Ramey's Chevrolet uh, in Richlands today and do the deal and tell them that after the whistle sent you. All right, coach, we got our talking smack segment real quick here. Uh, and what we're going to do, uh, we're going to comment on who our favorites are in the BDD, the Cumberland, uh, and the Hogo, and then we'll move down into the Southwest and the Mountain Seven. Uh, real quick, point counterpoint, favorites in the uh, Cumberland, and who's your dark horse? The Cumberland and Rye Cove, by far by leaps and bounds, should win it pretty easy. But the dark horse could be um, Eastside in that district. But uh, I think they're playing. Their quarterback got hurt, hurt, <clears throat> and but still they're a pretty good young team. And you know they battled last year. Not be surprised if I mean if they shake up some things, but right now, Ryko big uh, through the Cumberland. Okay, I, I agree with you, Ryko, and I think I got Eastside down as my dark horse as well. Um, over in the uh, Hogo, uh, who you have in the Hogo? Who's your favorite? I'm going with Chihai. Chihai? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Chihai with uh, Patrick Henry coming in at a close, close. That's interesting. So who's your dark horse? Chihai. <laughs> oh, so you got the dark horse. Winning, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Patrick Henry is the favorite. All right, I've got Patrick Henry as the favorite, and uh, I had Holston down at, uh, not Holston, but a retreat down as the dark horse. Excuse me. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, BDD, uh, my favorite, of course, is Grundy, and uh, I have Hurley down as the dark horse. All right, moving on to the Southwest District, uh, favorite and dark horse. My favorite is the Graham G man. God, who who would have thunk it? And you all are gonna be crazy, but the dark horse to win the Southwest District that could really make some noise is Graham's Middle School team. That's my dark horse. <laughs> I mean, right. bottom line. <laughs> well, and speaking of it, look here, boys. I seen that. Look here. That's the only carry. Right here. Play of, play of the week. The only carry he had the entire game. One carry. Graham Middle School. I think it's a little Patron, ain't it? I think it's Baby Patron. That's Baby Patron doing that. Yep. Taking it to the H O U S E. He can spell house. That's uh, impressive. All right, my Southwest District uh, uh, fave, of course, is Graham, and my dark horse is, and I'm liking what Lebanon's doing, but my dark horse is Virginia High. I think they're going to surprise some people this year. Over the Mountain Seven, who's your favorite? Who'd you say your dark horse was? Virginia High. What about Lebanon? I said I like what Lebanon's doing, but I'm going to go. You know Lebanon's got some them basketball players out, don't you? Oh. Caden Boyd's playing. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. No. That, I mean, Reese has got some weapons. That's good. That's I good mean, Caden Boyd is going to wreak havoc now. and I mean, he's already started out the year pretty good. Well, that's, that's uh, good, good news for Lebanon. 
but baby Patron, yeah, and I, it's crazy. So you got the Mountain Seven. I got to hear this one. I've been waiting. Who's even in the Mountain That's Seven? It's any good. Uh, yeah. Wise is they pretty yeah, good. Wise. Yeah, Wise. Yeah, maybe Wise. Gate City will be my dark horse. Gate City's my dark horse. Yeah, right? Gate City will be my dark horse. I just, I don't know. Well, I'm going. Well, it's like this. It's like this. They finally listened to me and put Cam Bostick. They put Cam Bostick mm -hmm. at quarterback. So they might pull the Mountain Seven off. And who are they? They might. Who are they? Cam Bostick. They ain't coming. Might. Pull the Cumberland off. Cumberland? Or the <laughs> Mountain 7. All right, dude, you have it, folks. Uh, uh, Union is who I'm picking for my favorite film. Who? Union. Uh, <clears throat> all right, and uh, let's see here. All right, one more quick thing on talking smack. Uh, not many people are aware of this, but uh, a little bit of an issue up in uh, uh, out in Eastern Virginia. Freedom Woodbridge uh, will only play six varsity games uh, this season due to having no returning starters and a 45-man roster. And so you might be asking why. Well, the former head coach, Darrell Overton, recently left Freedom uh, to accept the head coaching job at Hayfield High School. And most of the coaching staff actually went with him. But what is, uh, I don't know if you want to call this impressive or uh, reason for great concern, but 28 former Freedom players have now transferred to uh, uh, Hayfield, including all of the uh, Freedom starters, all of them. So basically, uh, Fairfax County Public Schools are currently investigating the situation, and out of concern for the uh, remaining players at Freedom, they have agreed to play a limited schedule this year where they will only play JV games. Um, so this is a developing story. We'll maybe we find out a little bit more about it. Uh, we will report back here on it. That's it for talking smack. All right, now let's take a look at our top five rankings in uh, Region D uh, in Southwest Virginia. In 1A, we have Ryko at one, Honecker at two, Eastside three, Patrick Henry four, and Holston at five. Uh, naturally, this is probably going to shake up and change at the end of the week. Uh, number in 2A, we've got Graham one, Union two, Gate City three, Ridgeview four, and Lebanon five. Any comments on the 1A, 2A? Not right now, but like you said, in a couple weeks or here to come, <clears throat> it, it could be a little shake up. <clears throat> All right. Because uh, you yeah. got to have a play for a grand middle school team on there. Yeah, you got to be yeah. All right, so each week this time, we're doing something a little bit new. We're going to introduce our After the Whistle Super 7. This includes uh, the Super 7 teams in Region D. This is 1A and 2D, uh, excuse me, 1A and 2A combined. And our number 17 coming in this week is our the Lebanon Pioneers who are sitting at 2-0 and, oh and uh, looking to improve the 3-0 oh this week. Number six, we have the East Side Spartans. Uh, that's a little bit maybe questionable. Some people think maybe they should be in front of 11. We'll have to wait and see. Number five, we have the Ryko War Eagles coming in. They're a top ranked 118 in our Super 7. And then number four, we have the Gate City Blue Devils. Number three, the Ridgeview Wolfpack. Number two, the Union Bears. And at number one, the Graham. G. There you go. Uh, on some teams on the edge right now, uh, hoping to get in Honecker, Grundy, Patrick Henry, Holston, and Taswell. And some developments this week could put them in there after the whistle, Super 7. Let us know what you think about our Super 7 by commenting uh, on our Facebook page as we move forward. All right, up next we have the, our popular segment that we do each and every time, and that is Stump the Crib. Today we're going to attempt to stump the crib. Uh, once again, as most of you have known, this being season seven, we have yet to stump the crib. Uh, but we feel like maybe this year is the time to do it. We'll have to wait and find out. If you don't know how this works, it's real simple. I have in my hand an envelope. This envelope was recently delivered to us by a gentleman wearing a briefcase that was handcuffed to his wrist. He received the briefcase at a local bank, True Point Bank, <laughs> where that uh, briefcase has been under the watchful eye of armed security for the last six months. And the contents of this uh, case and this envelope have not been seen. You have not seen it, is that correct? 
I have not seen anything. And neither have I. And the way this works is he is going to tell us the answer to the question in this envelope before, before I actually open up the envelope. Uh, so, do you need to do your little mojo thing with this? Hey, I've got it. I've already, I knew about it all the time. Okay, what's the answer to your question? Uh, I'm a cashew. <laughs> what? I'm a cashew. You're a cashew, not I'm, a nut. I'm a cashew. You're a nut. I'll agree, I'll I'm agree a with cashew. You. I think Pistol will agree with that. He's a nut, isn't he? All right, I'm a cashew. That's the answer to the question. That's right. Okay. So I've known that one since the first block this morning. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I don't want to answer. I'm a cashew. Okay. What did one nut say to the other nut during a game of tag? I'm a cashew. I'm a cashew. <laughs> I'm a cashew. <laughs> That's a pretty good play on words there. I never thought about that. That's a good one. All right, I have one more question right here, folks. One more envelope. <laughs> one more run. See if we can stuff it for you. What is the answer to the question in this envelope? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. All right, uh, final answer. Final O O O. All right, let's take a look at it. O O O. Question is, what sound does Santa make when he walks backwards? O O O. You have it, folks. Once again, we have failed to stump the Krig. He's a cashew, and Santa Claus walking backwards. All right, maybe next time we'll give it a shot and see if we can't pull it off. Okay, I uh, want to remind everybody that fresh is not a gimmick. Now, Belsino's bakes their bread from scratch every day at each of their locations, and all of their pizza, salads, and grinders are made to order. Uh, Belsino's has been using the same recipe that Grandpa Sam uh, used since 1959. So stop by and visit the Grundy, Virginia location uh, for the absolute freshest meal in town. Belsino's, great food, great service, great times. And coaches, if you're bringing your team through this area, uh, passing through on the way to a football game, give them a call, and I'm sure they'll hook you up uh, with a really good deal and take care of you and your team uh, prior to kickoff. And if you beat Coach Tester in a push-up contest, you can eat free. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go to our pigskin prognostications for this week. Um, got just a few games on the roster here, and I'll pull them up. Coach Critter will quickly make their picks. I'll announce them out and we'll go from there. Uh, next week, hopefully, we will bring you point spreads on all of these games. That's our goal, at least, uh, to offer a little bit of something different moving forward. But this week, we don't have the spreads, but next week, we will have them. Uh, and we will then explain to you how we got them. All right, but up first, we've got Virginia High at Radford. Uh, I'm taking Virginia High. Uh, Radford seems to be way down from last year. Yeah, who beat them last week? I honestly can't the remember. week one. Can't remember. It wasn't pretty. And George Wynn. Yeah. You're right. Is it at Virginia High or it's at, at Radford? At Radford. I'm going to go with Virginia High. Okay. Since I win this pick them every year, so, I mean, I'm going to have to. You're on at least a three or four-year streak, I know. At least. At least. Phelps at Bland County. Uh, this is a big game for Bland County to possibly reel off two in a row. Uh, I'm going with Bland County. Is it at Bland? It's at Bland. I'm going to go with Bland. All right, I've got Bland County in that. Eastmont at Northwood. Uh, it's a bit tough. I'm going to go with Northwood, playing at home. Uh, <clears throat> I think I like Northwood in this one as well. Uh, and the fact, I agree with you, the fact that they're playing at home is probably putting me over the top, makes me pick them. Uh, Nars at Chihai. And I will say this, and I don't care what Nars is not the team they've been last yeah, week. I've got Chill Howie as my dark horse. Okay, I'm with you on that as well. Chill Howie on my side. A union at Science Hill. Science Hill, big. I mean, not even close. Big. All right, well, if you know as well as I do, last year that Union Science Hill game made Union. 
it really and they lost, but it, it really made their football team. Yeah. Sure but, just said, made but I just think that Science Hill has too many. I wins. mean, they got seventeen thousand kids. Yeah. But you know what? Nobody will play you them. Them. Yeah. Union's not afraid to go down there. And well, play. no, they got to. They got to. They got to what? What? It's hard to play people in Virginia when you build. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> say they cheat somehow. What's the backpack? Yeah, it's the backpack. Yeah. And I did try to take a look in the backpack the other day, and uh, but you get within ten feet of it. It's there's guys coming around. The alarms go off. Well, they got earpieces in their ear and they start talking into their wrist mics and stuff. Some dark sunglasses on. I mean, uh, you can only get so close. Uh, but you know, I thought I could maybe slip up on it. Uh, next, Central at Ridgeview. I'm gonna take Ridgeview. Oh, this Quinn. Oh, Quinn show. Yeah. Right. Gate City at Abingdon. This ought to be a good football game. Abingdon was coming off a big win against the Berg. Blacksburg. Not Blacksburg, Christiansburg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the Big A. All right. Big A, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to go with Big A as well. <laughs> John Battle at Holston. I'm going with Holston. I'll tell you what, this, we're finally going to have a difference of opinion here. I'm going with Battle on this one. Um, I think they might be uh, hosting. I don't know if they're as good as they have been in the past. Uh, George Wythe at Graham. Uh, Gee, man. I think uh, until somebody shows me they can do it, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm going with Only you. one team can do it, but they ain't in Virginia. Princeton. I didn't say it, Patron. <laughs> <laughs> See what Princeton is good. I say God, they're good. Uh, Marion at Lebanon. Uh, Marion traveling to Lebanon. Lebanon is hot right now. I think it get they get hotter. I think you're going to see Reese's name in this top five again next week. I'm going with the Pioneers. I'm going with the Lebanon Pioneers, and I want to give out a shout out to Coach Ginn, praying for him. He's going through a lot right now, and Coach, I'm praying for you. And hope everything turns out with you. All right. Uh, then a big game. Uh, Tazel at Richlands. Uh, you know, Richlands has some uh, some key injuries this week. And uh, when it comes to Richlands games, I'm going to abstain from picking them. And Coach Brigger is going to abstain from picking any Twin Valley games. So uh, that allowed them to. And I'll sustain of taking the bull puppies. Is that who you're going to take? Yeah. All right, so you've got Taz on that one. Uh, Boys, you're just going to have to, I mean, I know what they go through. I mean, I know what they're going through. It's hard to get stuff going, and, yeah. you know, when you're trying and you're digging deep, it's just, uh, just you hope it clicks one week. Yeah, I mean, and when you've got injuries, it, key injuries, that's right. it's big and early in the season, uh, you're in uh, scramble mode, you know, as coaches. This is a huge game for both programs, and uh, – I really like the Blues' uh, chances going into this game. Yeah, they got some people got banged up. These people banged up now. I mean, I still think they, they can pull it off, but it's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be a, they're going to have to really play exceptionally well, avoid mistakes, finish drives, uh, and, and get things done up front uh, that they haven't done uh, uh, that they didn't do last week. Uh, next, Van West Virginia at Hurley. I uh, don't know anything really about Van. Rebels. I'm, I'm taking the Rebels in this one as well. The game is at the Cliff, or excuse me, the Cliff. Uh, and speaking of the Cliff, if you haven't checked it out, check out the article in the Bristol Herald Courier about uh, the uh, Pigskin Palace, I believe it was, and they did a little piece about the Cliff over there. The Mustard Biscuit Brigade, Castlewood, traveling to Tom Walker. Tom Walker seems to be. Uh, yeah, I'm going with Tom Walker the way they played Lee High. Uh, seems like they're uh, we have recovered fairly well from last season. Fort Chiswell at East Side. Uh, the fact that they're traveling, I'm picking East Side. This one, I still think East Side is one of the dark horse teams in Southwest Virginia this year. I get that quarterback help. East Side, East Side as well. J.I. Burton at Patrick Henry. Uh, Patrick Henry rebounds big Patrick time. Patrick Henry gets back on the winning trail. Uh, Rye Cove. This is the, uh, one of our uh, 
five game or three or five games of the week. Rye Cove at Honeaker, and uh, even though the War Eagles are traveling over to uh, uh, Fuller Field over there, I think uh, that Rye Cove comes away with some sweet revenge. I'm, I'm, I'm calling this one uh, at least uh, two scores. Rye Cove at least. We got Cove. Going with the Cove. Cove. Retreat at Grayson County. Uh, this game's been pretty good the last few years. Uh, I don't figure anything will change. Uh, what do you got? Grayson County. I just hear they just went that much last year, but. Well, I'm kind of with you on that. Grayson County. They're a big school. Big school, I mean, yeah. And Virginia, all right. Virginia Tech at ODU. Couldn't the Hokies win two in a row? It should have won, it should be three in a row, but I'm going with the Hokies in this one. Got? I'm going with the Jokies. All right. Uh, one thing about it, they just let us down the first game of the year instead of making us wait for the second and third quarter. Sure. Up next, we got the big ball game, West Virginia at Pitt. Uh, West Virginia? Yeah, yeah but the same of, way. A lot so. of buzz up in West Virginia, though. It could just be Neil Brown's last year. I'm going with... It's at Pitt. Pitt at home. All right, I'm going to take West Virginia uh, despite that. Uh, that's probably a little bit unwise, but I'm doing it out of partiality. UVA wise at Concord. Uh, I'm, I'm taking Concord. Taking Concord? Yes. Well, I tell you what, I think Coach Bass and Company gets their first win, and uh, I'm going with UVA wise here. And our last pick game of the week, Bluefield State travels to Emory and Henry. We're Emory born and Emory bred. That's a stupid when question. When we die, it. we'll be Emory dead. So rah, rah for Emory and Henry. Rah, rah for Emory and Henry. Rah, rah for Emory. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> All right, Emory and Henry, that's the final picks for Pick Skin Prognostications. I don't have anything else uh, left for this week. Uh, don't you have anything before we get out of here? I do not. All right. Well, um, let's see. Until next time, I'm Coach Moore. I'm Coach Krieger. Reminding you that I accidentally called 911, so I set my own house on fire to keep from looking stupid. <laughs> Good day.